Welcome back. All right, so yes, the entertainment guy is safe. I am here. I'm on my set. Uh, you're going to hear a, a, an error a purifier in the background because there's a new 3D printer that Gabriel got, and apparently the air purifier is important. So that being said, I'm going to do a nice little quick video for all you fine people on the internet. Just a couple things that uh, in my viewing of TV this week I've wanted to discuss. First off, there is the, the episode of The Flash this week which made me laugh. I don't know that it was supposed to be funny. In that, you know, so now the big bad has been taken care of for the first part of the season and now they're in the realm of nothing. It, it really, the episode starts with Barry and Iris heading off on some kind of baby vacation because she's pregnant. So that's what you do on uh, when you find out you're pregnant, you go off on a holiday, okay? And I understand, I, I get it, I do. Um, but that meant that for the rest of the episode, anytime somebody was in trouble, well, you can't call Barry because he's on vacation as if he can't run at a million miles an hour. As if Barry couldn't go, uh, Iris, there's this thing I gotta take care of. Uh, this could be really tough though, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Because he can't do that, right? Like there's a point where uh, Cecile's upset that she missed a train and I kept yelling at the TV, just call Barry. Just call Barry. He'll come, he'll pick you up, he'll run you there, it'll take like 10 seconds, problem solved. But of course, because Barry wasn't in the episode, how much how much does Grant Gustin have to hate the role at this point to say, can we have this episode without the Flash? I feel like this episode really needs no Flash in it, even though it's called the Flash. It's called the Flash. But at any rate, uh, with Barry not being there, it meant that you had Allegra and Cecile in charge of things, and Becky's magically alive because alternate reality and, I, I don't know, uh, it was just a way to get this, this bad luck, good luck girl in there, which is fine. Becky is okay. Uh, if you used to watch Much Music back in the day when they had VJs, she was sugar on Much Music. She moved to the States. She's had an acting career since, but... Because she has such a high-pitched voice, I get the feeling that it's limited the acting roles she's been offered. That's just the feeling I get. I wouldn't be surprised. Although, she, I believe she has a lot of voiceover work for cartoons. I will say, a lot of voiceover work for cartoons, but in terms of her being like a romantic lead or anything, I, I think the high-pitched voice would probably cancel that out. Uh, but at any rate... Um, so that's your storyline, and her luck's turned bad again, and her fiancé's in a coma, and they've blamed her for it. And what's weird is that she's being framed, but they never really get into, like, other than, oh, this is bad for her. How? Why? And so Cecile gets all caught up. And then she's mad at Becky because she misses her train. You missed your train because you weren't looking at the clock, Cecile. Who in this day and age, in 2023, doesn't have an alarm on their phone for something they need to do? Right? I My phone prompts me a half an hour before every Canucks game, just in case. Like, and, and, and it's it's what I do. I, 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 you know, watch and recap all the games. And so I... It's just there's these lapses in logic that just drive me nuts. The funny thing is, this episode, despite the lapses in logic, a little bit better than the five-episode arc they had because it was something different. Uh, again, it didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, basically, Iris loses her powers at one point because she has a sadness, I guess. I... I don't know. Apparently her, her powers are reliant on how much she believes in herself. So it's like Doctor Who with love fixes everything. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is... So watching The Big Bang Theory. And it's it's something I watch because it's mindless. And that's really all it is. It's mindless. I've watched all the episodes. I, I know what happens. And during the day, TV during the day sucks. Like it's just... It's, it's either news, which is usually upsetting or frustrating for whatever reason. Uh, you have your, your, your court shows, which could be entertaining. I watched Hot Bench today, which I always... <laughs> the term Hot Bench just sounds so weird, you know, and it, it's just the, the whole the whole setup is bizarre, and then they, they pretend they're, they're having this argument between the three judges before they render their judgment. It's just, it's, it's a silliness. Um, I do enjoy The Price is Right still, although The Price is Right gets kind of repetitive. I did enjoy a Price is Right episode the other day because for the first half of the episode, everybody lost. And they lost spectacularly. And then um, when they got to a spin of the big wheel, the first two went over. So the third girl comes up and it's, so you win because the other two lost. <laughs> and so I didn't end up watching up until the end. It's too bad because somebody won the fourth one. I was like, well, that's that sucks then. My favorite episodes of Price is Right are where everybody wins or nobody wins. <laughs> right up to both people going over in the showcase. I'm aging myself and I'm aware of this. But 
I've been watching Friends, so I'll start with Friends. I've been watching Friends, and I watched a video last night on how Chandler and and Ross and Rachel and everybody grows. I would argue against that. I don't think Ross actually has growth emotionally. I look at Gro Ross in the first season, I look at Ross in the final season, and he's still basically a creepy, weird individual. And that's, I don't know how else to put it. And I don't understand why Rachel is in love with him. And not only that, but I was watching an episode last night, and I had kind of forgotten this one, where he's dating Katie, played by Rena Sofer. And Rena Sofer, I was so in love with her back then. She was from General Hospital. Um, and, and just absolutely beautiful. And so Jennifer Aniston, Rachel, says, I don't want you dating her because I don't want you dating anybody. I don't want you dating me either. And there's a laugh track in every second line. And I was like, None of this dialogue's funny. This dialogue is creepy and weird. It is it is just weird. And and in Friends, they'll do that where there's... And I know, I've seen the ones with Ross where if you take out the laugh track, everything he says is creepy. This was Rachel. That everything she was saying was controlling, manipulative, and creepy. And it was wrong. And Ross just goes, okay, I won't have a girlfriend. And it's just, wait, what? So you bring in this person, and, and the show is bad for this, where they'll bring in a guest as like, oh, this is the new love interest for whichever character, and then they're gone two episodes later. Just bam. The one that upsets me the most is Paget Brewster. She was the one that was dating Joey, and then ended up dating Chandler, and then she cheated on Chandler a couple episodes later. Well, why bother with the whole storyline of Chandler being in love with her, and him giving her this really special book just because a couple episodes later she's going to sleep with somebody else. Like, I, I, that, that one really ticked me off. And apparently it ticked off the cast, too. They really liked Paget Brewster. She went on, of course, to be famous in Criminal Minds. Uh, absolutely phenomenal actress. And I, I never understood with Friends why they didn't let somebody stay and become part of the cast. Like, at least Big Bang Theory, they added characters that became part of the cast. Uh, friends, you just you had guests, and they were out. They were gone. Now, Big Bang Theory has a problem that I think is worse than Joey. So Joey does go from being kind of dumb and a little bit self-centered to just being ridiculously stupid. By the final season, he is he is phenomenally dumb. And I understand people thinking that's offensive. And on some level, it is. Sure, yep. Uh, it, it's lazy writing more than anything. But Raj in Big Bang Theory is the most... To me, the most egregious example of a character who shows no growth whatsoever. So from season 1 to season 12, went 12 years, right? Um, the only difference is he can talk to women without drinking. That's it. He is still just awful. The final episode, he's sitting with Sarah Michelle Gellar, and he's all like an idiot about it. And it's like, he's learned nothing. He has actively learned nothing. Now, the show does change Howard into a different character. By the end of the series, he's not the same character he is at the start. Um, it, it does it does really over-exaggerate the things with Sheldon as well. And it mocks things about Sheldon's personality that it really shouldn't. And with Leonard, he's just, he's, he's kind of a prick by the end of the series. Penny and Leonard are just absolutely, and, and there's episodes too where uh, especially in the later seasons where you'll have a storyline of Penny and Leonard, a storyline of Sheldon and Amy, and a storyline of Howard and Stuart and everybody else, and they, they never cross. And those episodes make me angry because as a writer, what you've done now is instead of writing a 22-minute episode, or however many minutes are in each episode now, I know that time keeps dropping because um, they, they keep adding more and more advertising time, what you end up with is you end up with a show where it's basically three seven-minute episodes. You can't tell a story in seven minutes. So there's no storyline. It's just pointless. So at the end of an episode of a show, I shouldn't think, well, that was pointless. And I kind of felt that at the end of The Flash this week. And I have felt that numerous times watching The Big Bang Theory. But the biggest pointless issue is Raj is there to be the butt of all the jokes. Um, they make fun of him because he's foreign. There's always the foreign jokes that are in there. Um, I do want to go through Big Bang Theory and, and submit myself to this, where I go through from the first episode until the last episode and count the number of jokes that are about people being Jewish, about people being Indian, jokes about Penny being stupid, jokes about, um, you know, half-naked women and all. Like, I want to go through and figure out, did the jokes change in how they were told or was it the same the whole way through? 
or did they pick up as the show went along? Did they start out with funny jokes and end up with just the lame, lazy jokes? Um, I've watched videos on YouTube where they talk about shows and they talk about how, you know, things change. I watched one on Family Guy that talked about how many cutaways there are in Family Guy and how it, how the cutaways got more and more prominent during seasons that were lo lowly rated, both on TV in terms of actual TV ratings and by the fans. So when they had more cutaways, the ratings dropped. And so when there was more storyline and it felt more cohesive, it worked. So I want to do something like that with Big Bang Theory. Obviously, I don't do all the video editing and all the fancy stuff that a lot of those channels do. But I want to have some fun with it. Because, uh, again, it feels like there's always something being discussed with the Big Bang Theory. The one thing that I, I get a laugh out of at this point is that there are the discussions about uh, young Sheldon at this point. And young Sheldon um, is a totally different show. And yet they always say, oh... This bang, this Big Bang Theory now is no longer canon because this happened on Young Sheldon. Yeah, how many things happened in the Big Bang Theory that were completely abandoned? A lot. That's something I'm going to count up too. Uh, whether it's it's Penny's Penny Blossoms she was selling online, whether it was the the shoe recognition app she had, or or the math recognition app the guys had. Uh, whatever these things are that just never get brought up again, I think are worthy of note as well. And it's lazy writing. It's really really lazy writing. Which would be fine if it was purely episodic and nothing changes, but on the Big Bang Theory, things did change, relationships advanced. And so the idea that we're going to have this happen to this character next week, and then we're never going to mention it again, is just insane. Absolutely insane. Now on The Flash, on the other hand, because it's the final season, they're doing a lot of flashback stuff, which I find really hilarious, and they probably don't intend it to be hilarious. Because when I'm watching this, I'm like, oh yeah, that sucked. Oh, that was dumb. I remember that. That was really bad. Oh, that was terrible. That was before I met my wife, and that was awful. I'm still watching this show. Who am I laughing at? Probably myself. So there's that. All right. So I just wanted to have just a quick little catch-up on what I've been watching and all that. Of course, watching YouTube videos. I watched the What Culture Wrestling ones with Simon Miller, because you have to. It's just, that's what I have to do. And Red Letter Media. Uh, anything Red Letter Media does, I appreciate um, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I generate, because I get asked every now and then what I watch, and this week, that's what, it, that's been what I've been watching, outside of some, some political stuff I watch here and there, but I don't discuss on this channel or on the other. So anyways, there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always, especially the idea that Raj is a really lazily written character. I think it gets worse as the series goes along, in the same manner as Joey. Like, we have one character left we're picking on, we're gonna lean into that, we're not gonna give him a full-time girlfriend, because then we can't really pick on him. And it, it gets really obvious to me by the time the series wraps. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.